2 Kings chapter 13. It was in the 23rd year of Yoash, the son of Ahaziah, the king of Yehuda, that Yehoahaz, the son of Yehu, began his reign over Israel in Shamron. He ruled for 17 years. He did what was evil from Adonai's perspective. He followed the sins of Yarovam, the son of Nevat, who made Israel sin, and he never ceased committing those sins. Adonai's anger burned against Israel, and he kept handing them over to Hazael, king of Aram, and Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael. But Yehoahaz pleaded to Adonai, and Adonai listened to him, because he saw the oppression the king of Aram was inflicting on Israel. So Adonai gave Israel a savior who freed them from the grip of Aram, so that the people of Israel could live in their tents as they had before. Despite that, instead of turning from the sins of the house of Yarovam, who made Israel sin, they continued to live in the sinful way. Moreover, the Asherah continued to stand in Shamran. The king of Aram destroyed Jehoahaz's army, making them like chaff when grain is threshed, except for fifty horsemen, ten chariots, and ten thousand foot soldiers. Other activities of Jehoahaz, all his accomplishments and his power, are recorded in the annals of the kings of Israel. Jehoahaz slept with his ancestors, and they buried him in Shamran. Then Yoash, his son, took his place as king. It was in the 37th year of Yoash, king of Yehuda, that Yoash, the son of Jehoahaz, began his rule over Israel in Shamran. He ruled for 16 years. He did what was evil from Adonai's perspective and did not turn from all the sins of Yarovam, the son of Nevat, who made Israel sin. On the contrary, he lived in this sinful way. Other activities of Yoash, all his accomplishments, and his power in fighting Amatziah, king of Yehuda, are recorded in the annals of the kings of Israel. Yoash slept with his ancestors, and Yarovam occupied his throne. Yoash was buried in Shamran with the kings of Israel. Elisha was now ill with a disease from which he would eventually die. Yoash, the king of Israel, came down to visit him and wept over him. He said, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Elisha said to him, Bring a bow and arrows. And he brought him a bow and arrows. He said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. And he put his hand on it. Then Elisha laid his hands on the king's hands and said, Open the east window. He opened it. Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. He said, Adonai's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory against Aram. You will defeat Aram completely at Ephek. He said, Take the arrows. And he took them. He told the king of Israel, Strike the ground. He struck the ground three times, then stopped. The man of God became angry with him. He said, you should have struck five or six times, then you would have defeated Aram completely. As it is, you will defeat Aram only three times. Elisha died, and they placed him in a burial cave. Now the raiding parties of Moab used to make yearly incursions into the land at the start of the year. Once it happened that just as they were burying a man, they spotted a raiding party. So they threw the man's body into Elisha's burial cave. And the moment the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Hazael, king of Aram, oppressed Israel throughout the lifetime of Jehoahaz. But Adonai was gracious, took pity on them, and looked on them with favor because of his covenant with Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. He was not willing to destroy them, and to this day he has not banished them from his presence. Hazael, king of Aram, died, and Ben-Hadad, took, his son, took his place as king. Then Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, captured from Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities which he had captured in war from Jehoahaz, his father. Three times Joash defeated him, thus recovering the cities of Israel. End of Second Kings chapter 13